Okay, so this is the next video about the Poisson distribution. In the last video, we talked about the conditions for a Poisson, that they were random, the events happened at random, that they couldn't happen simultaneously, that they uh, had to be independent, and the average had to be proportional to an interval of time or area. And we talked about why, if I count the number of school cars that go past, the school traveling towards around about in one hour as 240 i can then work out some probabilities because it meets those conditions the events are random cars drive past at random they cannot drive past simultaneously they drive past independently of each other and that the number of cars coming past is proportional to the time interval that i look at so if there's 240 in one hour in half an hour there'll be 120 and in 10 minutes there'd be 20, uh, 40. Yeah? So, it says, what is the probability that in one hour, 250 cars travel past it? So, the first thing I'm going to work out is my lambda. Lambda is 240. So, that's my average number, and it was in the question. So, now I'm going to work out the probability x equals 250, and now that is going to be a Poisson PDF. In Poisson, remember, there's only two conditions. The lambda and the number you're after. So I want 240 cars as an average, and I want 250, and that gives me a probability of 0 0.0205. So that's that done. So the next one is in the next five minutes, 25 travel cars travel past. So first off, I knew lambda for an hour was 240, so I'm going to have to divide the 240 by 12 to turn it into five minute blocks. So in, 20, in five minutes, 20 cars should drive past. Now I want to have exactly 25 cars drive past. So I want x equals 25. That's a plus on PDF of 20, 25. And that gives me a probability of 0 0.0446. Notice I'm rounding all mines to four decimal places. Remember, you can be doing this on your calculator as you go past. It's set function distributions which is on the variables button and then I'm scroll up on plus on PDF is some three from the bottom okay now I've got outside school uh, less than a 31 cars travel past in the towards the roundabout in 10 minutes so now I've got to change my lambda again it's now in 10 minutes so I'm going to divide it by six because there's six lots of 10 minutes in an hour that's 40 so I've got probability x is less than 31, so that means probability of x is less than or equal to 30. Remember our cumulative distributions have to be less than or equal to. So now I'm using a plus on CDF, 40, 30, and that will give me that the probability that less than 30 cars travel past, or say less than 31 travel past, is 0 0.615, or 617, I don't know where the 5 came from. And my last one is the probability of more than 50 cars travel past in the next 10 minutes. So my lambda is still 40 in 10 minutes. We've done that before. I've now got probability that x is greater than 50. And that is going to be the same as doing 1 minus probability x is less than or equal to 50. Because more than 50 does not include 50. Okay. So now I've got 1 minus probability x is less than or equal to 50. So that's 1 minus the Poisson distribution of 40, 50 which is 1 minus 0.9474. As I've talked about in the last video, if you make these numbers add up to 9, up until the last decimal place, which has to add up to 10, that's 0 0.0526, and there's my answer. Okay, so that's doing the Poisson distribution. Now, if you're not sure about these less thans or equal to's, use the file that's on the conference, uh, and treat that as a way of helping you do find out about whether you need to be a greater than or less than but calculators always work out a less than or equal to so that's what the cdf function does okay cool catch you next time